Now that we have gotten past 10 volumes of this series, why not take the best of the best and put them all into one glorious video? These were your popular votes, and now you get to listen to them all. Hope you enjoy. Here is the best of seven micropastas to keep you up tonight. In June of 1972, a woman appeared in Cedar Sinai Hospital in nothing but a white gown covered in blood. Now this in itself should not be too surprising as people often have accidents nearby and come to the nearest hospital for medical attention. But there were two things that caused people who saw her to vomit and flee in terror. The first being that she wasn't exactly human. She resembled something close to a mannequin, but had the dexterity and fluidity of a normal human being. Her face was as flawless as a mannequin's, devoid of eyebrows and smeared in makeup. She had a kitten clenched in between her teeth. Her jaws clamped so unnaturally tightly around it to the point where no teeth could be seen. The blood was still squirting out over her gown and onto the floor. She then pulled it out of her mouth, tossed it aside, and collapsed. From the moment she stepped through the entrance to when she was taken to a hospital room and cleaned up before getting prepped for sedation, she was completely calm, expressionless, and motionless. The doctors had thought it best to restrain her until the authorities could arrive and she didn't protest. They were unable to get any kind of response from her and most staff members felt too uncomfortable to look directly at her for more than a few seconds. But the second the staff tried to sedate her, she fought back with extreme force. Two members of staff holding her down as her body rose up on the bed with that same blank expression. She turned her emotionless eyes towards the male doctor and did something unusual. She smiled. As she did, the female doctor screamed and let go out of shock. And the woman's mouth were not human teeth, but long, sharp spikes. Too long for her mouth to close fully without causing any damage. The male doctor stared back at her for a moment before asking, What in the hell are you? She cracked her neck down to her shoulder to observe him, still smiling. There was a long pause. The security had been alerted and it could be heard coming down the hallway. As he heard them, she darted forward, sinking her teeth into the front of his throat, ripping out his jugular and letting him fall to the floor, gasping for air as he choked on his own blood. She stood up and leaned over him, her face coming dangerously close to his. As the life faded from his eyes, she leaned closer and whispered in his ear, I am God. The doctor's eyes filled with fear as he watched as he watched her calmly walk away to greet the security men. His last ever sight would be watching her feast on them one by one. The female doctor who survived the incident named her the Expressionless. There was never a sighting of her again. The cops had everything about the kidnapping of Joey wrong. Their prime suspect, Scooter the Clown, was a well-known children's entertainer in town. He performed at parties like Joey's all the time. At the precinct, I am an insignificant ant, flailing for the attention of titans. Finally, a cop turns to me and says, Are you lost, little boy? On cue, I can hold my silence no longer. The balloons with the ransom note, they were filled with helium, right? I asked. Scooter never had a helium tank there that day. He blew everything up by hand. Check his truck, and you will see I am telling the truth. The officer smiled and left, only to return ten minutes later, ghost-stricken. He got down on his knees and rattled. I don't know how we missed that, kid, but you just did that clown a service. I beamed as I walked home, knowing my hero was safe, not ever dreaming that he would thank me in person. When I saw him a block from my home, my jaw dropped. Someone's been a good little detective, 
I have a special badge for you, Scooter said. He reached into his pocket, grabbed the balloon in the shape of a badge, and then blew it up in front of me. As soon as I held its light floating form, my heart froze. Without another word, he turned around and started dancing down the street, pausing only occasionally to put a balloon to his lips, tie it, and then release it into the air. As each one drifted into the sky, I realized just how wrong all of us were about Scooter. Fingers trembling with excitement, I opened the package. Just as I had hoped, it was the camera I won on eBay. With mild delight, I realized I had received a better deal than I had realized because the previous owner had left the memory card in the slot. Before sending an email to the seller alerting them of the mistake, I decided to see if anything was on it. Setting the camera on slideshow, I watched as the camera displayed a picture of a shipping label. My confusion turned to horror as the next image was of a person brutally murdered. The rest of the card was alternating pictures of a mailing address followed by a murder scene. The last image was of the shipping label from the box I had just opened. A married couple who had just returned from their honeymoon decided to buy a house. The couple was very happy because they managed to get the house at a very cheap price. It was in a nice neighborhood close to the city and just a short walk from a shopping center. One day, the husband was walking down the hall and he, when he spotted a red crayon lying on the floor. The couple didn't have any children, so the husband wondered where the crayon had come from. Perhaps the previous residents left it behind, he said to himself, as he casually threw it in the trash. The next day, the husband came home from work to find another red crayon lying in exactly the same spot. He was very puzzled and decided to ask his wife about it. The wife grew pale in the face when he brought it up. She told him that every day since they moved into the house, she had been finding red crayons when she was cleaning. They were always lying in the same spot at the end of the hallway. The husband was standing in the hallway, wondering about this weird phenomenon, when he began to notice something wasn't quite right. The hallway was too short. He tapped on the wall at the end of the hallway and heard a hollow sound. Curious, he began peeling off the wallpaper, despite the protests of his wife. Behind the wallpaper, they found a pair of sliding doors. It was as if someone had carefully hidden the entrance to a closet or a small room. The husband discovered that the sliding doors had been nailed shut. He got a hammer from his toolbox and began prying out the nails one by one. After pulling out the last nail, he slowly opened the sliding door to reveal the small hidden room. Looking inside, they saw that the white walls of the little space were covered with words scribbled in red crayon. Over and over again were the words, Mommy, I'm sorry, let me out. Mommy, I'm sorry, let me out. Mommy, I'm sorry, let me out. A beautiful young girl is left home alone, with only her dog to protect her. On the news that night, they announce that there is a serial killer on the loose in the area. Before she goes to bed, she locks all the doors and tries to lock all the windows, but the one in the basement won't lock. She decides to leave it unlocked, but locks the basement door and goes to bed. Her dog takes its customary place under her bed. In the deep of night, she awakens to a dripping sound coming from her bathroom. Half awake, the girl feels the comforting lick from her dog and falls back to sleep. She reawakens to the dripping sound, reaches her hand down to the dog where she feels the reassuring lick and falls back to sleep. Once more, she awakens to the dripping sound. She reaches her hand down and feels the lick of her dog. Now curious about the dripping sound, she gets up and slowly walks towards the bathroom. 
the dripping sound getting louder as she approaches. She reaches the bathroom and turns on the light. She is greeted by a horrific sight. Hanging from the shower nozzle is her dog with its throat slid open and its blood dripping into the bathtub. Something on the bathroom mirror catches her eye. She turns around. Written on the wall in her dog's blood are the words, Humans can lick too. One school day, a boy named Tom was sitting in class and doing math. It was six more minutes until after school. As he was doing his homework, something caught his eye. His desk was next to the window, and he turned and looked to the grass outside. It looked like a picture. When school was over, he ran to the spot where he saw it. He ran fast so that no one else could grab it. He picked it up and smiled. It had a picture of the most beautiful girl he had ever seen. She had a dress with tights on and red shoes, and her hand was formed into a peace sign. She was so beautiful. He wanted to meet her, so he ran all over the school and asked everyone if they knew her or have ever seen her before. But everyone he asked said no. He was devastated. When he was home, he asked his older sister if she knew the girl, but unfortunately, she also said no. It was very late. So Tom walked up the stairs, placed a picture on his bedside table, and he went to sleep. In the middle of the night, Tom was awakened by a tap on his window. It was like a nail tapping. He got scared. After the tapping, he heard a giggle. He saw a shadow near his window. So he got out of his bed, walked toward his window, opened it up, and followed the giggling. By the time he reached it, it was gone. The next day, he asked his neighbors if they knew her. Everybody said, sorry, no. When his mother came home, he even asked her if she knew her. She said no. He went to his room, placed a picture on his desk, and fell asleep. Once again, he was awakened by a tapping. He took the picture and followed the giggling. He walked across the road, when suddenly, he got hit by a car. He was dead with the picture in his hand. The driver got out of the car and tried to help him, but it was too late. Suddenly, he saw the picture and picked it up. He saw a cute girl holding up three fingers. I must have been six or seven when I lived in Lebanon. The country was ravaged by war at the time, and murders were common and frequent. I remember during a particularly vicious era when the bombs rarely stopped. I would stay at home sitting in front of my television, watching a very, very strange show. It was a kid's show that lasted about 30 minutes and contained strange and sinister images. To this day, I believe it was a thinly veiled attempt on the part of the media to use scare tactics to keep kids in place, because the moral of every episode revolved around very uptight ideologies. Stuff like, bad kids stay up late, bad kids have their hands under the covers when they sleep, and bad kids steal food from the fridge at night. It was very weird, and in Arabic to top it off. I didn't understand much of it, but for the most part, the images were very graphic and comprehensive. The thing that stuck with me the most, however, was the closing scene. It remained much the same in every episode. The camera would zoom in on an old rusted closed door. As it got closer to the door, strange and sometimes even agonizing screams would become more audible. It was extremely frightening especially for children's programming. Then a text would appear on the screen in Arabic reading. That's where bad kids go. 
Eventually, both the image and the sound would fade out. And that would be the end of the episode. About 15 or 16 years later, I became a journalistic photographer. That show had been in my mind all my life, popping up in my thoughts sporadically. Eventually, I'd had enough, and I decided to do some research. I finally managed to uncover the location of the studio where much of that channel's programming had been recorded. Upon further research, and eventually traveling on site, I found out it was now desolate and had been abandoned after the big war ended. I entered the building with my camera. It was burnt out from the inside. Either a fire had broken out or someone had wanted to incinerate all of the wooden furniture. After a few hours of cautiously making my way into the studio and snapping pictures, I found an isolated, out-of-the-way room. After having to break through a few old locks and managing to break the heavy door open, I remained frozen in the doorway for several long minutes. Traces of blood, feces, and tiny bone fragments lay scattered across the floor. It was a small room and an extremely morbid scene. What truly frightened me though, what made me turn away and never want to come back, was the bolted, caged microphone hanging from the ceiling in the middle of the room. Thank you all for watching. Just so you know, this series is far from over. There are plenty more small slices of stories out there filled with the most horrid things. And I promise you, I'll find them. And maybe you could too. Suggest a short creepypasta to be put into one of my collections down in the comments. I just might include them. Ha 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 ha.